What's kind of been your impression so far? You get your first pad, padded practice yesterday. You know, what have you thought of the cornerbacks and you know what you saw in them in that first padded practice? Uh, highly competitive. At times, a little maybe too competitive because the flags. You know, that's one thing that we definitely got to clean up, especially when the ball's in the air. When the ball's in the air, we are the receiver. So we got to continue to have that mindset and make sure when the ball's in the air, we got to go pick it. We can't just go. We're not going for breakups or anything else. Go for interception. Well, Sierra was making some impressive plays yesterday. What do you think about how he's come along? Uh, for the past two days, he's starting to trust the technique, right? He's starting to trust the process. Still going to be long, you know, a long road. Just some of the fact is there's a lot of things that I ask those guys to do from a technical standpoint. But he's starting to gain a grasp of it. He's really, really smart. So, and he's self-conscious. So, he, you know, he wants to please. He wants to do the right thing. So, I think, you know, the sky's the limit as long as he continues on that path. We talk about the two, having too many flags. Obviously, Chris Steele, when we talked to him uh, last week, and he said that's one of the things he's really been focused on is moving his feet better. What have you seen from him in that aspect, and how has he worked on that that aspect of his game? Uh, Chris is extremely better. You know, so sometimes, like, you know, some flags I ain't going to say, you know, some of them, but some of them was a little phantom, right? You know, that's called he lifts weights and other guys doesn't. But, uh, you know, just from a, a technical standpoint, make sure he doesn't get lazy. No lazy habits, right? He'll never play to the level of competition, play to the standard that we have in our room and the standard we have on this team. So no matter how tired you may be, no matter what down it is, no matter what game it is in the season, he just needs to make sure he stays consistent and doesn't get lack of days. How do you evaluate where things stand with that second corner spot? I know ITS has a few practices. You had other guys in there. Kind of where do you think about where things stand? Uh, it's not just the second corner spot. It's all the corner spots for me. You know, it's, a, it's an organizational depth chart. So it's always evolving. It's whoever's going to play the best at that moment at that time. And it's a long season. So just because, you know, two guys may start game one on the first play, those may not be the game, the guys that's in there on game number six. So it's always evolving, and it's good that, you know, we have the depth that we have right now because it's going to always be competition on a daily basis. I thought ITS had a really good spring and, you know, has made some plays already, even though he's, you know, a couple days behind. Where is he really taking a step forward for you? Uh, mentally. Mentally. His mindset's completely different. Totally different person. You get a chance to talk to him. Like, not that he wasn't always happy, but now you can see it. You know, he's smiling all the time. Uh, he's enjoying the room. You know, he's definitely keeping me on my toes in these few meetings. Just, you know, I may say one thing, and I may have said something different a month ago. He'd be like, uh-uh, you said. So, you know, just definitely just being around him. You know, he's, he's definitely brought into, like, you know, the family aspect we have in our, within our own room, you know. So I appreciate him for that, and, and he's growing a lot. Obviously, he's got the family aspect himself now as a, as a first-time father. How does that change a player, you know, from your experiences in the past? What have you seen when a, when a guy, you know, has a kid like that? Uh, you know, it, it, could, it could change it for the good. It could change it for the bad. To him, it's definitely changing for the good. You don't see more stress or more worrisome. You actually see, you know, someone who has someone that he has to take care of besides himself. As you know, it's more of a, a sense of, uh, I guess, you know, just care for the world, just everything. You know, he knows that he, he has a standard in which he has to uphold. It's not just for himself, but for someone else. And you can see it. You played a major role in this past recruiting class. What's it like for you to see all these guys? Out here now, like Corey and Sierra. Uh, you know, it's a day-to-day -day grind for them. I think they get used to college is a lot different than high school just because how competitive it is on every play every day. You know, never here are you just the guy because you could be the guy on one day, one play, and somebody else can replace you. And I think that's what they're trying to get a grasp of to compete at everything they do. It's not just competing when it's on, you know, Friday night. It's competing every day now. Our game's on Saturday. So I think they're starting to get a grasp of that. Did Profit have a, a big area to gain just because of playing two ways in high school? Um, you know, we had him listed as a running back coming out, and you know he could definitely do some things there too. When you, you bring him in as a DB, does he have a, a, a big um, area to kind of catch up, or is he he, he kind of already there? Uh, Profit is the person I think he's grown the most. Mm. So you know, like in the summer when we had like our first like little workout, and you know we did a couple of drills, I was like, oh my god, send him back to running back, <laughs> you know. But you could tell that he cares. So anytime somebody has a high care factor like he does, and he's naturally athletically gifted that you can see that how much he's starting to grow. Like right now, when he does a drill and somebody else does a drill, you don't see a difference, right? And, you know, some of these guys, you know, you get as a coach, like I don't want to tell you something four, five, six, seven times. And, you know, for him, it's the first time he hears it. For somebody else, they make a mistake, maybe the fifth or sixth time. So, and I think he's making that correction right away. 
And, you know, the, the guys like him around. He's a fun, care person to be around. He's always positive, always smiling. So I think, you know, the sky's the ceiling for him also. How have your responsibilities changed now that you're associated with uh, Just a lot more meetings with Coach Helen, just one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> just talking about things and, you know, aspects in which our team can grow and things in which that we just need to improve. And that's basically the, you know, the main way. And, you know, it's a long road, it's a long season, but we're talking about what we can do right now. Not last year, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but right now at the moment. And I think right now we'll be doing a great job of that. Uh, naturally, he's a, he's a playmaker, naturally, right? So, you know, a receiver at times you can play high or maybe if you know the, the plays on the other side and you may be the fifth option in a pass play, you can kind of jog the route. I think for him, he's showing a different intent as far as realizing at any play, at any moment that the ball could come to your guy and you have to be ready to perform. And, you know, you know, our leader in our room is Chris, and Chris has definitely touched on that where, you know, now he's getting to the aspect to where he understands even in a team aspect, it's like one-on-one. -on -one. The ball can still come to your guy and you have to play that. There's no plays off. What's the separator to, to create a starter? You know, you talk about this competition all the time. Chris talked about that, that his spot's not even locked in. What creates that separation for a starter each week? Uh, just someone who's, having, who's performing on a day-to-day -day basis, being consistent. I think, you know, the people that's going to you know, start games are the guys that's most consistent at that time at that moment. You know, don't come out here and tell me how great Tuesday practice was and Wednesday. You know, you went through the motions. You will be replaced. And that's the way it should be. Because, you know, I want guys that can be day-to-day day on a basis here because the game should be easy if the practice is hard. And that's what I want to do. I want everybody when the ball's in the air and no matter it's a fan, a person on our team, no matter who it is, they know that we're going to handle and take care of our business. Obviously, you're coaching against him. What do you think about Drake London in this camp? Uh, Drake London's a beast. You know, uh, that's, that's the political call for him right there. So, you know, day to day, like I told my guys, I say, you know, if you're competing against Drake London on a day to day basis, that's the best receiver in the conference. That's the best receiver in any of these conferences, in my opinion. And so as long as you go out there competing against him day to day basis, you know, you have somebody that's six five that can jump like a basketball player, yet he can run and come in and out of breaks and then he blocks. So he's, you know, all around wide receiver. So we look forward to that challenge on a day to day basis. Uh, I think right now, you know, like I've talked about pro about the players' consistency. You know, just having it on a day to day basis, being around each other. And you can see it in our room. Even you know, my graduate assistant talks about it. Uh, the guys are a lot closer. A lot closer. Even in my room, they're a lot closer. Like the things that they do together, they eat together, they spend time together. Just, you know, you can tell when people are close because not only do they joke around with each other, but they're able to get on one another in a, you know, in a hard way. When someone's maybe out of line, it used to always have to be me to maybe put them back in line. Now it's not like that. The group itself puts that person back in line. And we're all going to have those days or those plays or those moments. But it's good to see that the group is policing itself because we have a standard, and our standard is to be the best in the nation. Is, it, is there someone to step forward as kind of the leader of that group in that kind of role? Uh, you know what? I could say Chris, but yet IT has done it. Jaden, I've seen do it even today. You know, uh, I've seen Josh do it. So, I mean, it's it's all of us. You know, we all have standards. I have my standard even myself as a coach. I can't come out here and be lackadaisical or let the smallest thing go by. Like, I have to get on every little detail because once you do one little thing wrong, you get away with it, and then you can do it again. So I think just as a whole, our standard is extremely, extremely high.